So today, I thought I'd go outside. It's a fairly nice day, a little overcast, and I thought I'd talk about the Nikon Z6 II for vlogging. Now, that's not something that we typically do. We usually do talking head videos where we're kind of sitting still. Um, I just want to show you the setup that I'm using. I took a couple of pictures with my phone, and you can see this is not a small setup. It's a big setup. My Canon M50 is a much better setup for vlogging. Um, but I can see in the little mirror that's on the top, I'm looking at it right now, the eye autofocus is working perfectly. I just want to see if this setup can be reliable, like my M50 is, where, where I get up and move around and there's no issues. Okay, I don't have to worry about focus. It's hard enough to just uh, think about what you want to say and not have to worry about, you know, that your focus is right. So the Nikon Z6 II just got a firmware update this week. And uh, while I'm not really going to talk about that, I did want to mention two videos from other creators that did a really good job of explaining it. Uh, one is Steve Perry, and the other one is Ricci Talks, R-I-C-C-I -C -C Talks. He goes through all of the modes, shows everything about it. And from what I understand, basically it's just the focus box that follows your face around. It actually stays on the subject a little bit better. It didn't actually affect the autofocus. And the low light performance, which is something that was really important to me, has been improved. So those are two things that I really were looking forward to, but they go really in depth with all of that. Um, but I just wanted to check out this camera for vlogging. Now I have on it, like I showed you in that picture, I have my little mirror so I can look above the camera and see how I'm framed. You know, like right here, I'm just going out of frame and, you know, I can really mess around with it. And uh, the eye autofocus is really tracking my eyes, which is great. So I'm not worried about the focus. I have my little Rode Video Micro 2 on the side, and I have a Nikon adapted 16 to 35 f4 lens. Now, typically I would bring an ND filter with me here to shoot during the day. Even on a cloudy day like today, if I put this camera at f4, it's overexposed. So right now, I'm at like f11 in order to get the exposure right. And it's still kind of bright behind me. But uh, it was totally blown out at f4. So, in fact, I wonder if I could change that. Let's see what happens here. All right, so let's go down. All right, that's f4. So as you can see, way too bright. So this is why you want to have a ND filter. Uh, here's f11. I'm going to leave it at that. Now, I'm getting no shallow depth of field with this. Uh, with the ND filter, you can get a nice shallow depth of field, and everything looks great behind you because it's slightly out of focus. But like this, as I'm moving around, I want to see how it does. Now, this is something that is conspicuous. You know, it looks like I have a, I'm filming something, and it's heavy. So, you know, I'm six foot three, and you know, it's not horrible for me to hold, but if you're a little bit smaller or maybe um, you have some issues with your shoulders or your forearms, uh, this would be tough to carry around. Definitely uh, one of the native lenses might be better. My 24 to 70 is not as wide as this, so that's why I went with the 16 millimeter here. But let's put this at 24 millimeters. All right, so that's 24. So it's a little tighter, but you can get away with the 24 millimeter lens. And uh, you know, that might be something that could work for you because the lens is a lot smaller. In fact, this is my 24 millimeter. So it is a smaller lens and it would make the camera a little bit lighter. Let's go back out to 16. Yeah, it's a, that's a better view. You get a little bit of what's going on around me. Yeah. I don't know that this is a camera that I would vlog with just because of the sheer size. That's why I like having a camera like the M50. It's small, you can hold it in your hand even. You don't have to put it on a switch pod or a gorilla pod or something like that. It's a good camera to, to do this kind of stuff with. If you're walking around, you don't want to, you know, look like you're filming something. People, you know, they're not sure what you're doing. It's, it can be a little weird sometimes. So what's your opinion on photographing yourself in public or vlogging? It's weird, right? I still can't get over it. I, I, I've done it. I've done it in Walt Disney World. We've walked around with cameras. I'm here in a park right now. But when I see people coming towards me, I still feel weird about the whole thing. I don't know. Some people are very good at it. They don't seem to care. But walk down like a street in Manhattan, you know, doing this with a camera. But it's just a not natural 
thing to do, to be talking to a piece of equipment, you know, very strange. Uh, I'd love it in the comments if you could just throw in any weird experiences you've had. Do people say anything to you, you know, or do you just not care and just do it and not worry about what other people think? You know, it's probably the best way to go about it. All right, I was just thinking about that as I'm doing it, and I'm coming up on a couple sitting on a park bench that, you know, do I walk past them doing this or do I not? And I'm also wondering if you could see that bug that's on the lens. But I like the video quality of the Z6 II. And, um, you know, the I did a little videoing of uh, my band playing, and this camera, out of all the cameras we had set up, this one really, the video came out the best. So I'm, I'm liking the camera in just about every way. Now, in one of my future videos, I'm going to be testing out the low-light performance of the Z6 II because that's one of the things that the firmware was supposed to have fixed and that was with my Z5 it was almost useless to me in low light the Z6 II has been much better and the ISO performance is much better but I still find when it's dark enough the camera hunts so this didn't happen with my DSLR so this is something that I really hope that the firmware update fixed so I'm going to be testing that out and I'll let you guys know what I think about it um, I have the camera out camping Last weekend, I took a couple of uh, long exposures at night. I'll drop them in here. Performed well. I like working on the files. There's a lot, a lot of dynamic range in the files. Uh, you know, just like my D750 was. Uh, the, the image quality is great. Um, and the autofocus worked well at night, as long as there's some light, something for the camera to grab onto. Uh, when I would put the focus point in a spot that was maybe a little bit darker, uh, I would have a hard time. So I would have to move the focus point or, you know, I would have to play around with it a little bit. So it's something that this camera, you know, hopefully the update took care of. And um, one of the things that I noticed in Steve Perry's video is that the subject tracking on this is not spectacular. And I noted the same thing when I was down in Florida, I was shooting some seagulls on the beach. And this update was supposed to help with that and it doesn't seem like it has. Now, I put it in a different focus mode to get the shots that I took. I used one of the wide area focus modes and just you move the camera. So instead of letting the focus point track the subject, I actually followed it with the camera and I found I got much better results with that. So this camera has a lot of different focus modes and you really have to kind of figure out what you're trying to do and find the focus mode that's gonna work in that situation. The tracking focus, I think, is not there yet. Uh, but some of the auto focus modes, like the eye detect, I mean, it's good. It's great. This is this is following me around. It's actually great to just watch that stay right on my eye. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, this is. It takes one thing out of it that you just don't have to worry about anymore. The uh, the eye auto focus. It's great when it's reliable and it works well. And this seems to be working really well. This is after the firmware update. It was working well before also, but it's it's gotten even better. The tracking and the focus box really locks onto your eye. All right, so here's just a, just a little vlogging video. I have nothing to do today, so I thought I'd come out and, you know, do something I don't normally do. I'm usually uh, sitting like a talking head in front of my camera somewhere stationary. So I'm gonna drop some videos here um, of some of the other videos I've done about the uh, Z6 II. You know, if you're looking for this camera and it's something that you're interested in, I think it's a really nice uh, mirrorless camera from Nikon if you're already in the Nikon system. The lenses work well, um, having really no issues with it. I like the everything about it. So I'll drop uh, two videos in here and you can check them out and I will see you in the next video.